After traveling for 24 hours from Philadelphia to Frankfurt to Lagos and then Accra, we arrived after dark and couldn't see the city. The next morning we saw the energy and life of the capital of Accra for the first time. We had an appointment at a public school, La La Hoshua, to deliver requested supplies and help build bookshelves for a new library. It took us a while to find the road that led to the school and when we arrived the expected mat building materials and carpenter to supervise us were not there. We asked if they would like us to sing for the children or if that would be too disruptive. The teachers were very welcoming to us and we were privileged to hear the children sing for us as well. And our supplies were proudly accepted by a young man who will probably be the next Kofi Annan. studies and want to thank everybody who has done something to be able to bring this stationery to the students of Yamusha. We say a big thank you to you. Yeah. And since we sang for the older students we had to visit the younger ones too. Kumasi, we received a very kind critique of our pronunciation in Chvi. My son is the music master there. They are rhythm. And then when the P sung, you were pronouncing the words like a P man. Very nice. In fact, if wherever you go, you must sing the P song for them to hear that you know the language. A few minutes later, we received our first dancing lesson from the director of the Amanoresu Youth Choir.
One of the biggest highlights of the trip for us was a visit to the Asin Kushea traditional area for an audience with their beloved Nana and full dress ceremony for us. Let's 
special moment in the ceremony came when Mr. Chemanu, the father of a Swarthmore alum who had made all of our local arrangements for the tour, introduced Haverford senior Joel Kwabi, a native of Ghana who hopes to return someday. The chief that we were visiting, who was eager to promote education to the children of his village, and who had a nephew who went to Haverford himself, told us later that this was his proudest moment. Yeah. After being treated to a magnificent banquet in the presence of the Nana in his palace dining room, we hoped it still might be possible to visit the historic site of the final bathhouses of the slaves, which was along the way to our next hotel in Cape Coast where we would spend the night. We weren't sure that the guide would still be there to bring us in, or even if we had the emotional energy at the end of a day that was already so unexpectedly full, 
but our drivers faithfully guided us there through the dark country roads until the bus lights lit up some powerful murals on the walls of the historic site. The guide was waiting for us and led us with incredible sensitivity and conviction through the dark history of the millions of Africans who walked this pathway to slavery over the course of more than four centuries. We were invited to follow the guide to the river bank where the slaves were last allowed to bathe before being taken to the slave castles at Cape Coast and Elmina that we would see the next day. We all followed with some trepidation, aware more than ever of our differing racial origins, but hoping also to find a way to be open to our common humanity. For a while there was some nervous clicking of cameras and shrieks from a couple of us who were stung by ants along the way, but eventually we found our way to the riverbank in silence until someone asked us to sing This Little Light of Mine. At our next concert in Cape Coast, we were given an expert lesson in singing some very challenging African music. Yeah, Mary, my baby, I'm 